Let's get right into it. Number 8. The inability to truly multitask. You think you're good at juggling emails, listening to a podcast, and planning your dinner simultaneously, right? You believe you are a hyper-efficient modern human capable of parallel processing. Sorry to break it to you, but you are a liar, and your brain is a single-core processor pretending to be a supercomputer. True human limits dictate that you cannot truly multitask. What you are actually doing is called task switching, and it is the mental equivalent of repeatedly slamming your car between reverse and drive while trying to park. Every time you switch from one task to another, say, from reading this script to checking a text notification, your brain has to execute a painful little sequence. Disengage from task A, figure out where it left off, retrieve the rules for task B, execute task B, then disengage from task B and re-engage with task A. This switching costs you time, energy, and, critically, error rates skyrocket. You think you're saving time, but you're just forcing your frontal lobe to perform a series of rapid, irritating resets. Scientists see the measurable dip in cognitive performance during task switching, yet we continue to do it because we are addicted to the feeling of productivity, even if the productivity itself is garbage. Number 7. The Autonomic Cold Water Shock If you've ever plunged into freezing water, you know the immediate, almost painful shock. You gasp, you hyperventilate, and you feel an overwhelming, irrational urge to get out right now. This isn't just you being a drama queen. It's a full-blown, life-threatening neurological defense mechanism called the autonomic cold water shock response, and it's a terrifying example of your body misfiring. When your skin detects a sudden drop in temperature, your nervous system flips the panic switch. It causes an immediate, involuntary inhalation, which is a major problem if your head is underwater. Simultaneously, your heart rate skyrockets, your blood vessels constrict dramatically, and your entire body enters a state of high-alert cardiovascular stress. In healthy people, this dual attack of rapid breathing and rapid heart rate can lead to an arrhythmia or, less dramatically but still dangerous, you just suck in a lungful of water and end up drowning. The disturbing part? This response is so ancient and so powerful that even the most well-trained, disciplined Navy SEAL can't will it away. Your survival instincts are trying to save you from hypothermia, but the process itself might be what kills you first. Your body is basically shouting, Warning! Danger! I shall now proceed to inadvertently end you. Number 6. The Unseen Smell Filter You walk into your own home, and you don't smell a thing. But the second a guest walks in, their nose wrinkles and they ask, What is that smell? Maybe it's the dog, maybe it's the lingering scent of last night's questionable tuna casserole, but whatever it is, you are completely nose blind to it. This isn't laziness, it's a necessary, disturbing limit of your olfactory system, called olfactory fatigue or adaptation. Your brain determines that a constant smell is probably harmless and not worth wasting precious cognitive resources on, so it filters it out entirely. This is fantastic when you work near a sewage plant, but it's a terrifying failure when you consider dangerous things like a slow gas leak. Your body's safety mechanism for preventing sensory overload is also its biggest vulnerability, essentially making your nose go offline for anything that isn't brand new information. Your senses are basically telling you, we have archived the smell of your own life. It is safe, boring, and no longer worthy of attention. Number 5. The Sleep Paralysis Hijack If you've experienced sleep paralysis, you know that moment of absolute, primal terror. You wake up. You are completely conscious, but you cannot move a single muscle. And your body feels like it weighs a thousand pounds. What's disturbing is that this is your brain working perfectly as it tries to transition out of the active dreaming stage. Normally, during the dreaming stage of sleep, your brain paralyzes your muscles to keep you from physically acting out your dreams. Sleep paralysis happens when your mind wakes up before the atonia mechanism is switched off. You are locked in your own body, and because your brain is half asleep, it panics and starts conjuring terrifying, hallucinatory figures, demons, shadows, intruders to explain why you can't move. It's the brain's attempt to make sense of sensory deprivation, and its best guess is, you are being attacked by an ancient entity. It's a glitch in the timing, a profound and horrifying reminder that your brain is just a massive network of chemical switches. And sometimes, they flip on in the wrong order, 
leaving you helpless in the face of imaginary horrors. Number 4. The Irresistible Scratch Reflex Think about that moment when you get a tiny, insignificant itch on your back, just out of reach. It starts small, but within seconds, it consumes your entire attention. This is the irresistible scratch reflex, and it's a neurological command you can barely fight, even when you know scratching will make it worse. The disturbing limit here is that the urge to scratch can entirely override your most complex, high-level executive functions. Research suggests scratching doesn't just relieve the sensation, it actually activates the brain's reward centers, giving you a tiny, fleeting shot of pleasure, a positive feedback loop for destructive behavior. Your body is biologically hardwired to prioritize the superficial relief of an itchy patch of skin over critical tasks, sustained focus, or long-term skin health. Basically, your sensory system is a petulant child, demanding immediate gratification, and your rational adult brain is completely powerless to say no. Number 3. The Over-Efficiency of Pain We all know pain is the body's alarm system, but what happens when the alarm gets stuck? That's hyperalgesia, a condition where the nervous system becomes pathologically efficient at feeling pain. After an injury or illness, the surrounding area doesn't just feel normal pain, it feels magnified pain. A light touch feels like a burn, a minor pressure feels like a crushing weight. The scary limit this exposes is that your nervous system can fundamentally rewire itself to become too good at its job. It's a chronic signaling error, where the volume on the pain dial is perpetually cranked up, even after the initial threat is gone. It shows that your brain, in its zeal to protect you, can permanently change the way it interprets sensory input, turning non-painful stimuli into agony. You are left in a state of enhanced, debilitating sensitivity that serves no survival purpose. It's like a smoke detector that starts screaming every time you try to turn on the bathroom light. Number 2. Sudden Exploding Head Syndrome Before you panic, no, your cranium is not preparing for a catastrophic self-detonation, but you will feel like it is. Imagine this. You finally hit that sweet spot of pre-sleep, right on the edge of consciousness, when a sound so deafening and jarring like a bomb going off, a gunshot, or someone slamming a door right next to your ear snaps you awake. Except, nothing happened. Your room is quiet. Your house is quiet. The only thing that exploded was your peace. This isn't a dream. And it's not tinnitus. It's exploding head syndrome. And it is exactly as dramatic as it sounds. The running theory is that as your brain starts to shut down for sleep, the auditory neurons decide to fire all at once, in a final, defiant blitzkrieg of noise before the lights go out. It's a glitch in the transition between wakefulness and sleep, a massive, non-existent bang that only you can hear. It's your brain basically throwing a microscopic, unnecessary rave right as the bouncer tells everyone to go home. Good luck explaining that one to your doctor. Number 1. The Limit of Human Endurance You've probably heard of the runner's high. That glorious moment when your legs stop screaming and your brain decides running is actually quite fun. But before that, there's a wall. And according to certain physiological theories, that wall hits far, far sooner than you think. There's a disturbing, unofficial metric in extreme endurance sports, often called the 40% rule. The idea, pioneered by Navy SEALs, is that when your mind tells you you are absolutely, physically finished, you cannot take another step, you are going to vomit and collapse, your tank is empty, you are, in reality, only 40% of the way to your actual physiological limit. Your brain, the overly cautious life support system that it is, is constantly sending out emergency alarms long before there's actual catastrophic damage. It's a primal, energy-saving measure. It's not your muscles failing. It's your mind protecting its energy reserves. This suggests that the vast majority of human endurance, whether physical or mental, is capped not by biology, but by a psychological self-sabotage system. It means that the biggest, most disturbing limit we have isn't bone deep, it's brain deep. You could do so much more. But your brain is essentially telling you, nah, this seems like too much effort, let's just watch TV. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.